Hello everyone and welcome you to Mojo for Industry Development Debate on Manufacturing Beyond 2022. Knowledge partner for this session is Castec Aerospace. As we all know, India has the potential to become a global manufacturing hub and as per data, by 2030, it is going to add to the tune of 500 billion US dollar annually to the global economy. Today, in this Mojo for Industry Development debate on manufacturing beyond 2022, we will try to understand what the year 2022 is likely to have in store for India's manufacturing sector. We will also highlight the key manufacturing trends to watch for. I would like to invite Mr. Chandrasekhar Bharti, Founder and Managing Director, S. Micrometic MIT, and Mr. Rajesh Nath, Managing Director of VDM India. Welcome, sir, both of you. So now to start with, uh, may I invite Mr. Rajesh Nath? When we are talking about the future trends in manufacturing, in fact, friends, manufacturing is going to under, undergo a paradigm shift uh, with endeavors to make it smart. Now, presently, only 8 to 10% of the tasks in manufacturing are automated. And there is a potential, in fact, to increase this to about 20 to 25 percent in the next uh, five to six years. And for that, we need to make manufacturing smart to make the whole ecosystem network. And that is what I would like to talk about, talking about technology trends from vision to reality. Now, friends, what exactly is Industry 4.0? Just let me put it in a very simple form. Industry 4.0 is, in fact, the digital transformation of manufacturing. It connects machines and systems. It is intelligent networking of machines and processes for the industry with the help of information and communication technology. So, in a way, it connects physical world with the digital world. Because here we are finding machines will communicate with each other in the factory. And this data can also be transferred on network with the customer. And I think that is what is going to be the beauty of this smart manufacturing. Now, when we talk about smart manufacturing, friends, the two important aspects are we are talking about horizontal integration and we are talking about a vertical integration also. So the horizontal integration takes place at several levels. On the production floor, the machines constantly communicate their performance status and together respond autonomously to dynamic production requirements. So this is the horizontal integration trends. And when we talk about the vertical integration in Industry 4.0, it aims to tie together all logical layers within the organization right from the field layer, which is the production floor, up to the R&D, quality assurance, product management, IT, sales and marketing. Now, in fact, data will flow freely and transparently up and down these layers. Now, the key technologies in Industry 4.0 are Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning, Advanced Robotics, Additive manufacturing, augmented reality, virtual reality, cloud computing, big data, and cybersecurity. Networked or connected ecosystem with Internet of Things, it is not only manufacturing that we are going to make smart, but we can extend it to smart houses, smart buildings, transfer of data, smart, in fact, smart mobility also, friends where data can be easily transferred right across various sectors. In healthcare also, you can have, in fact, you already have several apps. You get notifications from the apps. On the larger perspective, friends, we can talk about a network ecosystem. Now, one of the important factors here, friends, are the what are going to be the challenges, I think, for implementation of Industry 4.0. Certainly, it is a question what will benefit? How will the companies derive benefit from Industry 4.0? It is important to understand that Industry 4.0 is not a black box that you just buy and implement it or put it in your system. In fact, 
each organization will also have to see and understand themselves what is the purpose of industry 4.0 to them and then only an effective business case or a business model out of industry 4.0 can be developed industry 4.0 it is a i would say it is a journey it is not a destination it is a journey that has to be completed where the company can adopt go in various steps or stages to complete this journey and of course industry 4.0 provides the framework and the vision and it is an evolutionary process so thank you thank you so much mr rajasnath for sharing such wonderful insight on the key trends that will dominate manufacturing in 2022 also talking about you now why industry 4.0 is being considered as a journey not a destination so now in this mode of industry development debate on manufacturing beyond 2022 we would like to invite mr chandrashekar bharti so now he is going to give us an overview on the technology trends that will dominate machine tools industry in 2022 welcome mr chandrashekar thank you for the opportunity to speak here so if you really look at the trends that's driving uh, machine tools and its technologies the first is see in today's age of amazon uh, you know same day delivery and then in other countries where they even have one hour delivery there's a lot of uh, thrust towards fast delivery but I mean, gone are those days when you start looking at you know placing a po waiting 3 uh, months or 3 years or the, even 3 days to wait for delivery now the expectation the trends going forward is i place a delivery and then i mean ideally i should get it as soon as possible the second is at the productivity that typically large volume productions would give there is a trend towards lower batch sizes high mix of products but an expectation of high productivity and low cost as if you are manufacturing millions and millions on the same line the third is given that automation is starting to take hold there is an inbuilt uh, expectation that it should not really require humans to physically intervene and start resolving issues as they crop up in manufacturing or in production so a lot of autonomous resolution of issues is the trend that is driving some of what we are going to see in the next slide automation is all around us while it is still nascent in india compared to countries like china and europe it is catching up uh, pretty fast and even where the smaller to mid size companies have started to take uh, steps towards automation we also believe that in the future to come we are going to have a mix of both mega factories which can manufacture uh, any complex uh, product or micro factories which are located very close to the customer and can manufacture optimized uh, topical products at a very low cost with a low cost of delivery as well okay. so these trends when you really translate to uh, the technologies of machine tools we see a few key uh, technology trends coming up one is multitasking machines for example if you look at the traditional machine tools we have uh, cnc lathes for turning operations we have cnc machine centers for uh, milling operations or machining operations grinders for very high precision uh, finished uh, parts where we believe that this is going and we already started to see a trend is let's say a turn mill center which can do both type of uh, operations in one setting maybe a turn mill with grinding hmm, multi axis so we believe that these multitasking machines are starting to uh, you know becoming uh, to become more prevalent in the years to come the second trend is as and when companies adopt automation the expectation is that any machines that's going to come in is ready for automation out of the box so this means the right guarding the right openings the right uh, interfaces for uh, automating whether it is gantry shoot robots anything else that would come up in the future so these machines would actually be out of the box ready for automation the third is with uh, whether it is mobile phones whether it is medical prosthetics 
whether it is uh, very small say implants uh, custom bio implants aerospace all of this requires machines that are of a much much higher precision and speeds the fourth trend is hybrid machines by this what i mean is typically there was a uh, schism between metal cutting machines or uh, subtractive machines and what is being called as additive machines or 3d printing machines it's conceivable that in the future that these machines would be uh, not necessarily separate but would be a combination of different functionalities such as subtractive and additive the last point i'd like to make uh, you know taking off on the earlier speaker as well is all these machines would be iot and industry for enable to serve multiple functions one is to actually serve the ecosystem needs for example for example it really should not require uh, somebody to say this machine needs coolant or tools or something else the machine should be able to broadcast that ahead of time whether it is for uh, consumables whether it is for maintenance whether it is for service for materials or also outcomes the other aspect that i'd like to bring is given the increasing drive towards automation it is conceivable that these machines should sort of uh, uh, i wouldn't call it replace but at least uh, reinforce a lot of the functions that a human would do for example a human would probably look at is this fixture right or is it uh, uh, you know is something else uh, needed for intervention before the cycle starts so a lot of these machines would have those interlocks built in have those capabilities built in so that the need of a human intervention would be uh, lessened with uh, time so these are the broad trends that we are seeing and uh, we believe that these trends will start to become more prevalent maybe in the next couple of years to come in 2022 certainly the multitasking machines and the automation uh, components and the I iot industry for components are going to be more prevalent and the uh, precision speeds and the hybridization of machines is probably going to follow in the years to come so thank you for your time thank you mr chandrasekhar for sharing an in depth analysis on the technology trends that will dominate very specifically machine tools industry in 2022 so to start the panel discussion uh, mr nath Um, could you highlight the key challenges for indian manufacturers and how manufacturing in india can become globally competitive can you just throw some light on this particular aspect one of the biggest challenges is if you are going to implement automation or industry 4.0 is the factor of cost it's not only factor of cost but in addition to that a bit of an uncertainty whether if we adopt automation do we have the in house capabilities to handle complex systems are the people in house trained to handle such systems i think these would be the questions that would largely play in the mind of uh, small enterprises mid size enterprises but i think it is very important shubhri that for the whole manufacturing ecosystem in india to grow the msmes which form the backbone of the manufacturing in, in india they have to grow the msmes can also take predictive steps of predictive maintenance and this will i think benefit the msmes more than the large companies so as we become more and more globalized uh, uh, shubhaji uh, we can call <laughs> it's call it a global village i think uh, for the msmes especially now coming out of pandemic these three r's are very uh, uh, very important Re uh, response to the condition recovery and resilience i think with these three r's the msmes can come out of this difficult phase and also contribute effectively to manufacture yeah that would be my basic take when he, he has actually captured the uh, real pain of the msmes which is for them every hour every rupee or paisa is uh, the lifeline for them so we have also been advocating that they start looking at their realized machine hour rate as a key metric of their success in industry for uh, for a uh, about a dozen years ago commercially we find that many of them don't even realize that they are not making money on the parts that they are uh, producing 
and in some cases uh, a lot of the legacy factors drive them to look at benchmarks which may be outdated so certainly looking at the uh, the uh, the pulse of uh, production what's happening uh, with each part produced what's happening between parts produced their different losses whether it's the major losses or the minor losses can bring a lot of uh, traction to their own profitability which eventually increases their competitiveness and the ability for them to grow their own companies and the country at large right sir so before concluding today's session we would request mr chandrasekhar to share his concluding remarks of today's session uh, i believe that we are going to start entering a virtuous cycle where uh, you know the new age technologies digital and allied uh, fields are going to start providing greater opportunities to people and also opportunities for them to leverage a lot more of the skill sets than they traditionally would have leveraged however it is also a moment of uh, challenge for those people who uh, haven't get uh, skilled themselves into the digital era so i would really urge a lot of uh, uh, the audience here to propagate the message that the skilling into the digital uh, era is going to be very very important whether it is usage of uh, you know uh, computers whether it's usage of uh, the right apps uh, and understanding what data to seek and then how to use the data to eventually effect the actions required thank you thank you mr nath your concluding remarks please and i think for the younger generation especially the young engineers coming out of colleges i think it is very important there is a lot of information available keep yourself abreast with the information available what is happening in the market what new technologies are being introduced in the market and i'm sure as we go ahead i would just like to use this uh, that when we are talking of digital transformation merging physical and digital platforms together so how will it benefit the manufacturing it will make manufacturing cost effective it will make manufacturing efficient it will make manufacturing sustainable and it will make ultimately manufacturing safe so that would be my concluding statement and thank you thank you very much for this opportunity thank you so much sir it's very well summarized sir so thank you once again mr chandrasekhar varthi and mr rajesh nath as we can see lots of optimism around the corner as mr rajesh nath as as well as mr chandrasekhar varthi we can just very, very well make out from their uh, opinions we are confident that indian manufacturing sector will gain momentum and will reach to its greater peak supported by a technologically advanced manufacturing ecosystem we hope you have enjoyed the session thoroughly we thank our knowledge partner for the session castec aerospace so this concludes the workshop for more updates please subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon